Did you know exactly which person was responsible for the idea that ultimately grew into this eventual resistance general? Well, the answer to that intriguing FN2187 question and many more interesting details pertaining to this big deal are all about to be revealed. Gareth here from What Culture Star Wars, and here are 10 things you didn't know about Finn. Number 10, he was at the center of a pretty cool uprising in the original Episode 9 script. While he would eventually lead a group of resistance fighters into battle against the Final Order during the climactic Exegol battle in The Rise of Skywalker, Finn actually seemingly once found himself at the centre of another battle entirely, in Colin Trevorrow's original Episode 9 script. After a piece of concept art was posted online by Collider Stephen Weintraub, one which depicted the former Stormtrooper leading what looked like a revolution on Coruscant, Based on the information found in the leaked Duel of the Fate script, John Boyega eventually added that this is very much the direction he thought Trevorrow was going to take the character in. The British star was also quick to note how he felt this particular uprising, involving him waving a blue flag as he led a bunch of droids, citizens and defected stormtroopers against the First Order forces would have been sick. However, Boyega would then eventually reveal on the Happy Sad Confused podcast a few years later that he's still yet to read that leaked original text, due to him no doubt being left heartbroken by what could have been. You're not the only one, John. Number 9. A Lawrence Kasdan outburst led to his Stormtrooper backstory. A long time ago, in a writer's room not that far away actually, the likes of Toy Story 3 screenwriter Michael Arndt and Episodes 5 and 6 co-writer Lawrence Kasdan were trying to come up with their next new leads for the upcoming sequel trilogy. The team were able to agree very quickly that they wanted Rey to be a scavenger character when fans met her in Episode 7, but the lad who would ultimately become Finn wasn't quite as easy to figure out. Initially, Arndt told Entertainment Weekly that the folks involved talked about the the idea of the male lead being a pirate or quite possibly a merchant marine. And after spending so much time trying to land on what sort of character the soon-to-be Finn was gonna be, Kazdan finally snapped. It was in this moment that he blasted his colleagues for not thinking big enough. Following that statement up by passionately suggesting, what if he's a stormtrooper that ran away? And just like that, the idea that would eventually grow into the First Order cadet with a guilty conscience was born. Number 8. He nearly became a pirate And speaking of that weird corner of the multiverse where Finn ended up being a pirate instead of a defecting stormtrooper, you may not have realised just how close this universe's FN2187 came to a life of space crime during the events of Episode 7. As Finn decides to leave Rey and the gang behind and flee from a First Order fight he felt the Resistance simply could not win, this big deal is soon seen having a chat with a pair of alien beings who would trade him work for transportation to the Outer Rim. And what would this work entail, I hear you ask? Well, it turns out that this red-headed figure was actually a Delphidian pirate by the name of Sidon Ithano, and his Gabdorin pal was known as Quiggled. Two awesome names, I'm sure you'll agree. The former was classed as the best pirate in the Outer Rim, and was only a Starkiller base blast on the Hosnian system away from successfully recruiting this useful former trooper to his crew. Had the First Order not taken out the New Republic here, Finn could have very much found himself temporarily living the space pirate life alongside the Crimson Corsair and his criminal pals. Number 7. The New Hope Reference in His Number while he would ultimately be rechristened Finn by his new Resistance pal Poe Dameron during the pair's First Order escape, this trooper actually didn't have a name at all for much of his life. That's really sad, isn't it? Instead, he went by the number FN2187, though he was given the creative nickname of 87 by his fellow cadets. So that's something. Far from simply being a random collection of digits, however, the numbers that followed FN were actually a little reference to Star Wars past. Back when Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and Chewbacca rescue Princess Leia on the Death Star during A New Hope, it was revealed that Organa was locked inside of cell 2187, and that number was actually a nod to a short film called 2187, directed by Arthur Lipsitt, one that helped inspire George Lucas to make his THX1138 feature, with those digits also being used for a cell number in A New Hope 2. So there you have it, Finn and the general he'd ultimately serve under shared a rather bizarre numerical connection. Now I've got a question for you, what is your favourite hidden Star Wars reference or easter egg? Let me know in the comment section down below. Number 6. His original name was Sam 
And while on the subject of this resistance hero's name, did you know that Finn wasn't actually the first choice of name for the lad who was stolen from his family at a young age? As revealed in The Art of Star Wars The Force Awakens, the character that ultimately became Finn was once known as Sam, and he was described as complete charisma by screenwriter Michael Arndt, with the then white character also originally being saved by an indigenous tribe after crash landing on Jakku, and eventually being reborn a hero after a healing ritual. This wasn't the only interesting reveal to tumble out of that particular book either. It was also made clear that Sam and a then Kira, eventually Rey, would have first come into contact with a rather drunk Han Solo on the planet simply known as Crime City. And this earlier version of the soon-to-be Finn would have eventually decided to turn his back on the villainous side after witnessing either the cold murdering of some rebels via firing squad or savage ejection from an airlock. Yep, that'll do it. Number 5. He almost had a British accent not only did Finn nearly look very different, find himself in the middle of a very different story, and also go by a completely different name, he also once boasted an entirely different accent. In those early days of bringing the character to life in front of director J.J. Abrams on The Force Awakens, John Boyega recalled on The Graham Norton Show a time when he was having a go at playing the part in a British accent. It very quickly became apparent that his native London accent wasn't quite right for the galaxy far, far away figure though, with Abrams simply telling his Finn actor that he didn't think it was working and they should just go with American instead. Thankfully, Boyega boasted a hell of an American accent and was able to masterfully pivot when his director decided to change things up a little. Had he not, then perhaps there's a world where JJ would have had no choice but to unleash a stormtrooper who sounded like he grew up in Peckham, which would have been pretty cool to be honest. Number 4. Who fixed his jacket and got it back to him? After attempting to take down Kylo Ren on Starkiller Base, this plucky lightsaber-wielding hero ended up being badly injured by the son of Han Solo and Leia Organa and his shoulder and spine weren't the only things damaged in the duel. His precious jacket got cut up by Ren's crossguard blade. Not long after recovering from his injuries and ultimately waking up on the Resistance Radis Cruiser though, Finn ends up in possession of the clothing given to him by Poe Dameron during The Force Awakens again. And not only that, the jacket has also clearly been repaired by someone. That person was actually revealed to be none other than Dameron himself. With Ryan Johnson leaving out a scene from The Last Jedi, showing Poe handing the coat back to his brave friend, before noting how he wasn't much of a sewer. Ah, oh, bless him, he tried. It's a sweet moment, one that both explains how Finn's unmistakable jacket ended up back on his, well, back, and again highlights how much the two lads evidently cared about one another. Number 3. The Truth About His Time as a First Order Cadet Finn had lived a long old life before fans met him for the first time in The Force Awakens. Taken from his family as a three-year-old kid, the eventual Resistance man would eventually note how he tragically couldn't even remember his birth family. In the years that would follow his forced recruitment to the First Order, the lab was given the number FN2187 and began training to become a future Stormtrooper. Though he still managed to sneak in some forbidden comic book reading time whenever he wasn't sharpening his high-level shooting and melee combat skills. And while serving under the chrome dome known as Captain Phasma, Finn would routinely score high marks as a cadet. This resulted in the First Order actually thinking this model student would make for an ideal stormtrooper. Finn even came into contact with Kylo Ren before the two crossed paths in the sequel trilogy, with the trooper once awkwardly saluting his eventual lightsaber adversary and Phasma with a mop as he went about his job of sanitizing Starkiller Base. Yep, he was a janitor. Also, long before he famously decided he couldn't pull the trigger for the First Order on Jakku, this troubled stormtrooper in training showed early signs of his eventual defection, choosing not to kill some innocent creatures when ordered to, and regularly hoping he wouldn't have to murder anyone when selected for executioner duty. Which brings us to... Number 2. Why he was sent to Jakku in the first place as already noted, Finn had shown some hesitancy to gun down those the First Order wanted him to kill throughout his time as a cadet, and that reluctance to pull the trigger ultimately reared its head once again as FN2187 and some of his trooper pals, Zeros, Nines and Slip, were sent to a mining colony at Presley's Tumble in the Priscilla system. The group were told by Captain Phasma that their mission was to restore order, after some Republic agents had stirred up some dissent in the workers and disrupted the mining operations. 
conditions. But these miners were actually striking due to the poor working conditions. Instead of negotiating with the workers though, it soon became clear that Phasma simply wanted Finn's team to execute the negotiators. In the end, Finn just couldn't find it in him to kill an innocent person in the moment. So Slip did the killing for him. How kind. Even though he couldn't go through with the execution, Finn was still officially made a stormtrooper after this particular mission, along with the rest of the squad. Happy days. And in a bid to make a conflicted Finn understand precisely what it meant to be a stormtrooper and provoke him into fighting back when faced with enemies that weren't afraid to kill him in the heat of battle, Phasma soon opted to deploy FN-2187 in the fight that would eventually go down on Jakku at the start of Episode 7. Oh, and that bloody trooper who wipes their plasma on a spooked Finn during that same battle? That was the same slip who did the aforementioned minor firing for his mate. Number 1. We may not have seen the last of him on the big screen. Even as recently as last year, it looked like any chance of John Boyega making a return as Finn in either a small or big screen Star Wars adventure had evaporated. After calling out Disney for sidelining his character on the back of marketing Finn as an important part of the trilogy back in 2020, and noting how he was the only Star Wars cast member whose experience of the franchise was based on their race, the Brit eventually told Sirius XM that he was good off it when asked if he'd ever return as the character. With Daisy Ridley's Rey now set to make her galaxy far, far away comeback in an upcoming flick set 15 years on from the rise of Skywalker though, Boyega appears to have made a bit of a U-turn on his Finn stance. Restoring the hopes of one day seeing Finn pop back up in the live-action Star Wars universe, the episode 7-9 star told Tech Radar recently that he was open to all opportunities after being asked about a potential appearance in a future project in this particular galaxy. You really can never say never when it comes to this iconic franchise, and Boyega's latest comments appear to suggest that there may actually be a future for everyone's favourite Force-sensitive one-time Stormtrooper after all. And that's our list. Know of any other things that people didn't know about Finn? Well, let me know all about them in the comments section right down below, and don't forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button while you're down there. I've been Gareth from What Culture Star Wars. May the Force be with you, and hopefully we'll see you soon. Bye-bye!